Hey there, and welcome back to How'd You Get That? Last time we took a look at trigonometric functions, and this time we are solving a Ferris wheel problem, which we'll need trigonometric functions to solve. The question is this. Imagine I have a Ferris wheel of radius 30 meters that rotates once every three minutes. If the center of the Ferris wheel is raised above the ground 35 meters, what is the height of a passenger two and a half minutes after the passenger gets on at the bottom of the Ferris wheel? First of all, let's ask ourselves the question, why should we want to model this problem using a trigonometric function? Well, we can see that this problem involves a Ferris wheel that oscillates between a minimum value and a maximum value, back to, down to that minimum value, back up to the maximum value, and it keeps doing that over and over throughout time. This is similar to what trigonometric functions do. They oscillate between values of y. So due to the cyclical nature of this problem, using a trigonometric function makes sense. Before we begin, I'm going to use t as my independent variable here because we are using time in this problem. We could use x, but I think it's more convenient to use time. And also I'm going to call my function capital H of t because again, we're solving for height. We need to figure out a few things for this problem. We need to find our values for a, b, c, and k, as well as choose which trigonometric function, sine or cosine, we want to use. I'll disregard tangent for this one because we don't have undefined values for the height of a passenger on a Ferris wheel, otherwise that would be kind of, well, weird for the passenger. So remember that sine and cosine are just translations of each other. I can get sine by translating cosine left or right and vice versa. So it doesn't really matter which one we choose, but one is going to be more convenient to use. If I choose the wrong one, all I'm going to do is end up with a C term that is non-zero. My rule of thumb is this. If the function needs to have a value of zero at t is equal to zero, then I choose sine. If the function needs to be a maximum or minimum, when t is equal to zero, I choose cosine. If neither of those things is true, then what I do is I plot that initial point, h is equal to negative c over b, and then I try to figure out which function is going to be most useful. But in this case, because we are starting the clock when the person gets on the Ferris wheel at t is equal to zero, we don't really need to worry about this. So which one do we want to use, sine or cosine? Well, if we take a look at this problem, we see that the passenger gets on at the bottom of the Ferris wheel, which is a height h above the ground. We can find that h by subtracting the height of the center of the Ferris wheel from the radius of the, of the Ferris wheel. And that distance or height above the ground that the passenger gets on the Ferris wheel at is just 35 minus 30, which is equal to five. So we have a minimum value of five when the passenger gets on the Ferris wheel. At the top of the Ferris wheel, we have a maximum height of just 30 plus 35 or 65. So we can see that our starting point is actually at a minimum here at the bottom of the Ferris wheel. So because we start at a minimum, it's going to be useful to use cosine here. So I want to solve this function now. Capital H of t is equal to a times cosine of bt minus c plus k. Now, because we chose our function cosine accurately, that c value is actually going to be zero. This function isn't shifted left or right away from a maximum at t is equal to zero. So c is again equal to zero. Let's take a look at our k value. So the vertical shift of this function is up the distance, which is the height of the center of the Ferris wheel above the ground. So k is just equal to 35. B again is related to our period. And remember for sine and cosine, B is equal to two pi over the period. But we know what the period is, it's three minutes. We get three minutes for every one cycle. So T is equal to three, which means that B is equal to two pi over three. Finally, A. A is our amplitude of the function, which is the distance between the midline and the maximum or the midline and the minimum. It turns out that that is the same value whether we measure it up or down, and we find that that value is just the radius of the Ferris wheel, which is 30. But wait, there's one more thing we need to catch with A. Since cosine normally starts at a maximum when A is positive, we need to recognize in this function we're actually starting at a minimum, so A must be negative. So overall, A is actually going to be negative 30. 
So ultimately, we have this function. Capital H of t is equal to negative 30 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 t plus 35. And we want to find what is the height of this person, so what is the value of the h function when the time is equal to 2.5 minutes. I'm going to convert this into 5 halves minutes just for the ease of doing this mentally instead of using a calculator. So we want to find what is the value of h of 5 over 2. Well, we're just going to plug in 5 over 2 for t, and I get this. Negative 30 times the cosine of 2 pi over 3 times 5 over 2 plus 35. So let's now reduce what's in the parentheses of the cosine function. So 2 pi over 3 times 5 over 2, that reduces to 5 pi over 3. So what is the cosine of 5 pi over 3? Well, if we look at the unit circle here, we can see that the angle 5 pi over 3 is actually in the fourth quadrant here. And it is an angle pi over 3 below the x-axis. So its reference angle is actually pi over 3. And we can see that the cosine of pi over 3 is equal to 1 half. We can verify this using our special right triangles, a 30, 60, 90 triangle, for instance, because pi over 3 is actually equivalent to 60 degrees. But the cosine of 5 pi over 3 is 1 half. Let's also verify the sine on that. In the fourth quadrant, cosine is positive. So therefore, actually, yes, cosine of 5 pi over 3 is equal to positive 1 half. So now I can replace positive 1 half in for the cosine of 5 pi over 3, and I get this. Negative 30 times 1 half plus 35 is equal to h of 5 over 2. Okay, so now we just need to reduce this down. 1 half of negative 30 is negative 15, and 35 minus 15 is equal to 20. So therefore, after 2.5 minutes of traveling on the Ferris wheel, after having gotten on at the bottom of the Ferris wheel, the passenger will be at a height of 20 meters. If you have any questions, leave them in the comments below, along with any suggestions you might have for future episodes of How'd You Get That? Hit that like button, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss another math, physics, or problem-solving tutorial. Thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next problem.